Hi, hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing if you already have. If you haven't, you know what to do, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be the first to find out when a new video is uploaded. So today we are talking about flying with your child. Now, um, technically, a child between zero and two is still a baby, which Mukokeki is, and the airline's treated very differently. So I just want to talk about his first flight experience, but also some of the things that I didn't think about that I'm like, ooh, actually, I should have thought about this. Let me share it all with you. So um, over the January part of holiday, we took a little family holiday to Cape Town, which is a just under two hour flight. And we were very, very excited, but I'm not gonna lie, as a mom, I was extremely nervous about flying with a child because we have all been that person who's like, I hope I'm not getting on a flight with a baby and now you're the one with the baby. <laughs> so you're kind of already judging yourself. And I've seen that trend on TikTok and different news articles of moms who will get, do little favors for the people in the same row as their child or people on the entire flight with a little message that says, hey, my name is Mukokeki, I'm this many months old. If I get it a bit, a bit niggly on the flight, it's my first time, da, da 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 Me, I'm not doing that for the simple reason that you know when you get on a flight, there's going to be children there, and what do children do? They cry. So I'm not going to be spending money sending love notes to other passengers. They will be strong. What I can tell you is they, people are generally good. They are generally very very helpful so let me start at the beginning which is the booking part of the flight you need to understand that just because baby is sitting on your lap doesn't mean baby is free we flew fly Saf air and i think the percentage of the flight was about 25 percent of your ticket is what a child pays at that time the tickets were very very expensive because it was peak season um but um you will put in your child's id details and you will have to have your child's travel documents, which are, you know, the birth certificate. If you don't already have a passport for your child, I think they do accept a passport as well for local travel. So you book for your child. Now, here's something you need to know. If you're traveling, because airlines now give you the option, airlines like FlySafe, give you an option to book without any checked-in luggage. Because you are paying for your child. Now, it wasn't clear on the website where I could understand, am I getting one bag or like as Rlem Khile or Rlem and each getting a suitcase of 20 kilograms allowance. And because it wasn't clear on the website, I had to call and they said, yes, he is getting a suitcase. What did I do? Because I'm a packer who loves in case and like to have everything, is that I booked an extra bag for Mugukeri, well, for all of us, basically. So we also had an extra bag. So we were gone for a week, and because Cape Town's weather is terribly unpredictable, you end up packing extras, and you want beach days, and you want your child to be able to get messy. So in my mind, I kind of budgeted three outfits, per day with an option of one of the outfits being warm winter wear. We were very fortunate that the weather was amazing. Half the time Mukokeki was in shorts, there was a day he was just in his diaper. You can head over to his Instagram at the Mukokeki and you can see some of his holiday pics and videos there. But um, you end up packing quite a lot because of what happens with the unpredictability of weather in Cape Town. So, when it came to packing, because now you know, cool, we're flying, we're flying on this day. How did we choose the time of the flight? Is how early we'd need to wake up and what that would mean for the child's schedule. So, I think our flight going there was a 10 a.m. flight. Um, the flight coming back, I think, was a possibly 11 a.m., but it was, it was morning. And enough morning time that you're not waking up super, super early. You're waking up at, at a decent time that you still have time to pack and prepare. So that's how we chose the time of the flight. Obviously, the times of flights are affected by supply and demand. So you go with the one that is the cheapest and the most manageable. I doubt 
I would ever fly with my child on like a 10 p.m. flight, the last flight going out to Cape Town, even if it's the cheapest one. Why? Because he's supposed to be sleeping then and that might be a recipe for disaster. So what's the next thing I did? I went online on Facebook, on the WhatsApp mommy groups I'm a part of, and I asked everyone, please share advice for a first time mom flying with her toddler and it's his first time flight and I got the most amazing advice. So that's the first thing I did and I made note of all the advice that people gave. One of them being, make sure you keep your child awake, especially if you're flying in the morning, so that they take their first nap on the plane. The other piece of advice that they gave was on takeoff and descent, which is where the pressure is changing, where their ears start to hurt and they're having a really difficult time, make sure they are sucking on something. So have options of things for them to be sucking on. So those are some of the advices that parents gave, like and activities. Another thing to note with airlines is that they don't allow a parent with an infant to sit at the window. They don't allow that. So what we did, because we're flying the three of us, two adults and one baby, the flight going to Cape Town, you have the option on FlySafe to pay to have nobody sit, sit next to an empty seat. It is significantly more expensive. I think you pay $7.50 for every person sitting next to the empty seat. So if, if you are booking with the infant and you're booking two adults and one child, they will force you to pick the seats that are middle and aisle. Why? Because usually parents need to get up to get something for their child. But because it was our first time, the flight going to Cape Town, we paid for the seat in the middle to be empty so we could just climatize and then we said return because it will just be too expensive. Then we will do the one that they force us to do, which is the infant and um, the, uh, the other parent sitting in the aisle and the middle seat. So now we know we have our whole row, but even though we have the middle seat empty, your child cannot sit there. For as long as your child is under the age of two, they have to be in a parent's lap. Cool, so got all the advice, packed, um, packed over maybe two days, just because I'm that person, I like to do checklists, make sure bags are weighed, and wanted to pack things in a way that, because it happens all around the world, that bags get lost. I packed in a way that the hand luggage bag has the baby's most important essentials. So, other than the backpack, which has his like normal diaper bag things, the hand luggage bag had like, if we had to arrive in Cape Town and our bags are not found or the baby's bag is not found, he at least has some outfits to wear, he has a change of shoes, he has a few things to bath, so that he can survive and that was the approach that we took is the hand luggage cool if our things get get lost um i think we put our expensive things like perfumes and jewelry and and breakables up in the hand luggage and then the others went in the back so when we were traveling hand luggage we had the wheel hand luggage bag uh we had two backpacks which is baby's backpack, which is baby's nappy bag, and just a, a, a nappy bag and an, another backpack, and we kept all valuables and things in there. So when you are packing outside of clothes and then cases and the counting number of days, and um, if you don't have a washing machine where you are going, um, we also I did do a bit of shopping to make sure he had a second swimming towel and. Um, all the basic medical things were there. Now, we were very fortunate because in Cape Town where we were staying is a very good friend of mine who happens to be a grandmother. And her house is already equipped with many things that a child needs. She has a camp cot. She has pretty much everything, including a wetsuit for a toddler in case we wanted to get into the waters with him where it's a little bit cold in Bloberg. So there are many things we didn't need to travel with. You can also take your pram, you can take a car seat with, but the reason we ended up not taking these things is because the car just was too full. So that was decided for us, like, okay, no pram, no this. Um, so what we did for car seat is we rented a car that has a car seat and you can select 
the size, the whatever is, call the car rental company to make sure they have everything you need. Great. Come time now for the morning of travel. Remember, I've already explained how we've separated the items. So the big bags could be closed. We've got everything for in case. And I did the checklist, triple checked. I also went to Diskem Baby City and Diskem and clicks to see do they have smaller things for like, you don't want to go with a baby powder this week, big unnecessarily having weight so you look for small items as well of all of baby's toiletries do the same thing for yourself so that you travel as light as possible also gave us an opportunity to look for baby suitcases we ended up not using baby suitcases he does have his own weekend suitcase we should talk about that in another video is what do we pack when he goes and visits family but this is like obviously a longer term uh further away from home and a little bit longer than just a weekend. Cool. Day of the flight, alarm was set and because we want the routine to be pretty much the same, which is getting up and he is having his breakfast and his porridge, he has his vitamins and all of the last minute things that need to be packed will go in hand luggage, which included his bottles and his formula. We got smaller versions and we told ourselves anything else will buy when we get there in Cape Town and he had his bath and he had his fit ready for the airport first flight vibes and then all of his snacks I went to Woolworths because they have nice little small kitty snack containers like the blueberries all of those things and then I got it's kind of like a mini mini lunchbox cooler box so it's not a kitty's bottle bag we did travel with a kitty's bottle bag but we had this as well just to keep all of his food nice and fresh with a bit of an ice pack cool what happened on that day because you know you can plan and then flights are delayed flights were delayed but we were perfectly fine why because we had prepped with snacks we had prepped with multiple things the airlines are amazing you just go to the front and they take care of you so if you're traveling alone as a parent with your little one do not stress they help you they assist you have your prem have everything up until you get to the plane and they will uh, put whatever they need to do under the the stowaway side and help you pack your things so flight was delayed um we had lots of tissues lots of wet, wet wipes i love being absolutely overly prepared and eventually they oh when the flight was delayed they made us go to a gate on the other side of the airport fun times but you make it a fun little adventure singing songs it's very exciting and then you get to the other side what i did do because we were sitting on the back half of the plane you know the back half where they make you go down the stairs and up the back of the plane i said we're not doing that we're with a baby um they let us go in first and find our seats and get settled and because we knew the whole row was ours we were fine we had kept him awake, so when he wanted to fall asleep in the car, we were singing nursery rhymes, having a good time. So by the time we got on the flight and we started giving him his bottle and his dummy, he passed out and he slept like a baby. He didn't sleep the entire flight. Um, he woke up just as we were starting to descend and then that's when... I mean, we went all in, like we had options of everything for him to suck as in something to drink or also the option of a dummy. He opted for milk and then he did not scream. He did not cry. Um, I think it was only when we got on the plane that he was a little bit fidgety. Um, one thing I didn't mention is that you do get to ask for an infant belt that almost loops into your, your belt so that baby sleeps on top of you. And it was all very exciting. And yes, um, when you come in the, the, the flight, you, you might naturally want to sensitize people to like, I'm with a child, please don't um, be surprised if baby does this. Like our son literally was just sitting on the lap and just opening and closing the tray. And I was like, they'll be strong. I'm not going to apologize. Like we paid for this child to be here. So <laughs> it's up to you. You can be all kind, but do not be apologetic is what I say. Uh, we didn't even have to use the bathroom. I think I did go and use the bathroom myself, but I didn't have to go through the experience of changing diapers or anything on a flight. Was able to do it when we landed at Cape Town International Airport. No luggage got lost. We did have a backup plan just in case. And then what we did do um, is that when we arrived at Cape Town International, the amazing thing is that 
they have a Woolies food there, so we're able to get lunch for all of us and make sure that as we are, you know, getting to the other side, if you've rented a car at Cape Town International, you know that you have to walk down a bridge and up a bridge. We took a golf cart and everything was sorted and beautiful. So his first flight was relatively comfortable. And I think all of the advice that moms gave, that parents gave, um, that my mom was like, did you check this? Did you check this? Um, you, you have to know as a parent that life happens. So give yourself ample time to get to the airport early and be settled. There is a little bit of that anxiety, making sure are all the documents sorted. We kept all our documents together. I also made sure that all documents were certified in case a birth certificate got lost and things like that, so that we have copies. Um, made sure that any questions I had, I called the airline to triple check, um, called the car rental company to triple check. Another wait at the airport was waiting for the 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 car because it was very very busy that day and it was a good thing that we had as many snacks and foods for baby to eat so pack snacks stack stock up you don't have to go to Woolworths and pay for the little things you don't have to go to checkers and pay for the little things you can literally buy little packets you know those plastics that we get my keep keep in buy your zimbas buy your whatevers put them in there make little snack bags for your child another trick that I thought was very clever. We didn't use it, um, but because I saw it later, it is a, you know those pull dispenser containers that you get at Diskim or Clicks? So what they said is great, especially for a child at this age where they like opening and closing things, is put a little treat inside those little things. So one could be a piece of Duravors, one could be, you know, Zimbas, another one could be fruit. And then it keeps them busy opening the little container, finding a little surprise that if your child doesn't sleep. So what happened on the return flight? Same thing. We pre prepared everything and he slept. He actually woke up as we landed. So we were sorted. We were prepared. Oh, another thing we did, I forgot to mention, because our child has had sinus issues. We have sinus issues. Is that we just sprayed a bit of saline just before takeoff just so that his sinuses were nice and clear. So saline is basically like salt water, so it doesn't have to be medicine. All of the brands do it. Uh, Bennett's has a saline spray. You can go to any pharmacy, get yourself a saline spray. Or Tumbo has a pharmacy. Um, if you have any issues, Cape Town International has a pharmacy. Even uh, King Shaka has a pharmacy when you're flying. So do not fret, do not stress, travel with baby is actually not that bad. It's not that difficult. And I'm so relieved that Mukukeki had a wonderful experience. The airline was amazing. Um, they were helpful. We didn't even have the pram and the car seat, but just by virtue of the fact that you have a child, they came and checked on us and asked, do you need anything? And we were a-okay. Any questions, put them down below or maybe share your experiences or comment on what I've shared. Maybe there's some other tricks that we can try for the next time we are flying with the little one. Again, if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to do so and hit the notification bell. See you soon.